Hey, this is Mikey here with another After Effects tutorial and what I'm going to do in this one is teach you how to do seamless looping video. So as a quick example of what we're going to end up with doing here is, uh, let me show you right here. So this video, um, as you can see, is looping down here in the timeline but if you look up here it's really kinda hard to tell where it starts and where it stops because it's pretty darn seamless and now I can take this and I'll show you how to do this I can take this and bring it into Photoshop and export it as an animated GIF and then this will just loop and play and play and play and, and you've got animated GIFs so the, what you're gonna learn here is the basics of looping how to make them somewhat seamless you're not gonna have footage just like this um, but you can take what you learn here and apply it to your own footage. So let's get started. So this is the piece of footage I want to loop. And it's only, you know, a couple of seconds long is all. And so the, what the first thing you need to do is you need to duplicate the footage. Because I'm going to be blending from the beginning to the end and kind of make it loop. So I'm going to take this footage, I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'm going to pick a random spot in the center and I'm going to highlight the footage. I'm going to cut one side of it. Now what I did is I held down option and I hit the right bracket and it cut it on the right. And I'm going to move this over here just one frame to the left or to the right and I'm going to select the bottom layer option left bracket. Now what we have here is this footage where this ends and this one begins they fit perfectly together now what I want to do is before I do anything I'm going to go into this footage the top layer and I'm going to keyframe all of the transform and then the same thing on the bottom footage keyframe all the transform let's move those over to right there and what this is going to ensure me is if I decide to move um, or do anything to this footage by the time it gets here it's gonna be lined up just right alright now that I've got that kinda set up another thing I want to do is I'm gonna go into this composition and I'm gonna just make the composition bigger so I've got some room around to work with and I'm gonna pre-comp this all later but I just so I can kinda see what I'm doing now I've got this ending and this beginning that line up with each other so what I do now is I just need to slide this over to this side and this over to the beginning so now this beginning and this ending will loop so if I move this all the way to the end it's not gonna work good in the middle but the endings are gonna loop just fine there's a jump in the middle so now what we have to do is just fix this jump in the middle and we do that by different rotations and scales and maybe adding you can see it's a little bit the exposure is a little bit different and just different blending techniques to try to make this seamless so let's give ourselves a few frames to work with let's go into this top layer bring the opacity down and let's kinda move it around till we got kind of a good and right about there it looks like it might work so let's go in and let's see what we can do to make this match first off let's change the rotation I'm gonna use the W tool the rotate tool just hit W on your keyboard and you can kind of rotate now I also want to now I also want to scale so I and position and try to get as much of this background kind of lined up into the right spot and it's easy to see when you have the opacity set so you can see 
Now at this point, let's bring the opacity up on this top one. It's going to, everything, all these changes I made to the scale and the position and the rotation, they're going to slowly move back. So when it does loop, it will now um, be the same as it was over here. So what I also want to do now is let's get our composition to the right length. And I can see here it's 1 minute and 13 frames. So let's change our composition settings to 1 minute and 13 frames. So let's kind of look through here. And at this point is where I want to switch it from this layer to this top layer. So opacity 100%. Let's go back a couple of frames and let's bring the opacity down to 0%. So opacity 100%. Make sure that's keyframed. I actually had undone the keyframe before. Let's go a couple of frames this way and bring the opacity down to 0%. And now it's and now it, it'll kind of fade between it. And let's kind of fix this spot here in the center. And how I do that is, remember I've keyframed this bottom footage. So I can, at this point, move this bottom footage until it kind of lines up a little bit better. Let's scale it and move it. And so far that's looking pretty good. So in order to get a better idea of what we're working with, let's select these two layers and go to Layer, Precompose. Let's label that Looped. So that precomposed it. Now let's go back into our composition settings and change this 1920 by 1080. Okay. And you can see things are moving a little bit. So I actually want to go into this composition settings and let's change this to 720. So I have some room to kind of move um, this around. We can scale that down a little bit. Okay. So let's see what we have here. So far, it's actually looking pretty darn good. Now you can see where it transitions is about right here. This is, you can see right here, you can see double lines and you know the water, everything looks a little bit fuzzy. So let's go into that composition and see if we can adjust some of this stuff a little bit. <coughs> and what I want to do is on this top I want to come in and mask out the line because that's the biggest difference that you can see. So I'm gonna, I've got the top layer selected. I'm going to turn on and off to see which one is the line and it's this one on the left. So I'm going to mask out the line. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and mask out the rest of this whole side. And let's go back into the mask and let's keyframe. We'll just keyframe the mask path and then on this next frame I want to then move this entire mask off. And I masked around that line and I um, actually need to make this uh, mask inverted. So I just click that on. Okay, so now you can see I don't have double I don't have double lines as it goes across. Let's take a look at this in the main composition. So now let's do a couple of things to kind of make it so it doesn't look like it's looping. And one thing that I see that makes it look like it's looping is 
right here you can see that the horizon kind of drops and you see that drop every time it goes through there and so you want it to kind of hide anything that that you can kind of see repeat so I'm gonna I've got the rulers open you can just hit command R to bring the rulers open and I'm gonna bring a ruler here and what I want to do is at the beginning actually moving right here at the beginning here I want to go into my position and this is in this is the pre comp I'm on now and I want to let's go ahead and keyframe all of those and then at the end as well because I want it to be start and stop in the same spot but now anywhere in between I can kind of go in and move things around and kind of it's just a quick and dirty way to kind of stabilize the footage a little bit to kind of you know just make it look a little bit not as uh, you know just to hide any of those points that are easy to see in a loop so now that we've got those taken care of, the next thing is this little boy's hair or whoever is here in this footage. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to scale this up. Now I already had used the position to move this around, so I'm going to now move my anchor point. And I just want to show the skier. Let's actually undo my anchor point. And there we go. I just want to show the skier. Now it's okay. He's kind of in there in a little bit in the, in the corner. That's fine. That's not bothering me. So now just a little bit more to kind of sell this is let's add some of our own. Uh, movement. So I'm going to on the position, um, even though I've got keyframes here, it doesn't matter. I can uh, still add expressions. And I'm going to add a wiggle expression. And let's have it go pretty fast. So wiggle parentheses 50, comma 10, semicolon. And so that's going to go 50 times a second, it's going to go 10 pixels. And this adds a little bit of more kind of randomness to it, which makes it a little bit harder to uh, kind of see the loop. And now what I want to do is add some motion blur. And it kind of hides some of these movements. Now the one thing that it didn't quite hide is this right here. So on this frame, this line is blurred and then all of a sudden it's not blurred right there. And then it's blurry again. So what I want to do is do some manual position movements. So I'm going to click on this one where it's not blurry. I'm going to and let's move this clear over here. and just kind of do some quick little vibration type movements to add some some more motion right where I need it. So as you can see doing a loop um, the key things to remember are having your start and your end point where I took the one footage and I duplicate it and I split it that's kind of where you start. You want to make sure that the end of this footage is the same as the beginning of this footage down here so that when it gets to the end of the composition and it starts over here it just works seamlessly and then the, in the middle is where you kinda wanna go in and finesse the the blending and how everything works through 
And one last thing I want to do, since there's lots of movement and we're kind of moving here, is I want to add a radio blur. I'm going to go in here instead of spin, I'm going to turn it on to zoom. Let's take the center and put it right about where the skier is. And let's bring this zoom level, you know, down to three. So let's kind of RAM preview this. So as you can see, pretty darn good, pretty smooth loop. Now how do we turn this into an animated GIF? Say we wanted to throw it up onto you know, Reddit or Google Plus or Twitter, wherever you want to put your animated GIF. Well, if you've got After Effects, there's a good chance you have Photoshop. And Photoshop can easily create animated GIFs just from an MP4 or a QuickTime video or whatever you have. So I'm going to just quickly export this and then bring it over into um, Photoshop. Okay, so here I am in Photoshop. And let me just grab my video that I just exported and just drag it and drop it right into Photoshop. So here's the video. There's the video layer. And it's as simple as I've got it into Photoshop. And I'm going to go to Save for Web. And here's the video. You can see it right here. And let's just go into the presets and see what they have. We want to do a GIF because we want it animated. So let's go in. Let's just check to see what we have. I just clicked on the top one. And right now we can see that it's at this setting. We're at 6.9 megabytes, which is too large for the internet. It's going to take a long time to load that. So let's try one of the other ones. It's a little bit better at 4.4. Let's see what we can do. Well, first off, we can we can make the size smaller. So let's go in here, put this at 75%. Okay, now we're looking at 2.9 megabytes. That's getting better. I'd like to see this under one megabyte. So let's change the amount of colors. Now that's not quite enough colors for me. So let's go into 64 colors. And I think really 128 is the amount of colors we're going to need for this. And let's go into the lossy. Now once you get your settings right, the way you want it, um, and the size you want it, make sure that here where it says looping options. And you can have it loop once or you can have it loop forever. And with this, since I have it looped, I want it to loop forever. So this is what it's going to end up kind of looking like. And so let's just click Save. It'll ask you to save it. So I'm going to just call it ski.gif and save. And now we have an animated GIF that will loop and loop and loop and loop. Now, I wanted to create this kind of small so the, the compression is not really great. If you've got you know faster internet, then you can afford you know a higher file. Or if you've got a video that maybe doesn't have as many gradients and different colors, say you're doing something that's an animation some motion graphics that's more solid colors, then you can create a lot more compressed video that doesn't um, look as kind of grainy and compressed as this one does. So I'm going to probably play around with this a little bit and I'll have the GIF for you to uh, download. I'll just have a link to it in the description. And so that is looping. So if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I will respond to you, and um, hopefully I can answer any of the questions you have. And if this is something that helped you out, please consider sharing this, because I know there are other people that may be having these same kind of questions about how to loop video and how to do that in After Effects. So just go ahead and share this video, and I would appreciate that greatly. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.